I didn't realize that I, I had a barrel chest and I could approximate anything. I could do those big dumb announcer voices and everything. I could do it when I was a kid. I thought it was useless, like a parlor trick or something, because no one ever looked up to see what the hell was going on. It's like, yeah, we know what you can do. Good news, everyone. You stupid idiot. What's up, Doc? What a doofus. <laughs> Hi, Vanity Fair. This is Billy West. Me. And today I'm going to be reviewing your impressions of my characters. Can't wait. I can't go through with it, Skeet. What if she says no or starts laughing or something? Hi, my name is Doug Funny. I just love running around with my friend Skeeter and my dog Porkchop. I really like Patty Mayonnaise. She's probably one of the prettiest girls in all the world. <laughs> that was really darn good. Bravo. Thank you for your bravery. Doug, as it was described to me originally, was 11 and a half, painfully shy tweener. This voice that you're doing sounds like he might be older, which to me is a perfectly fine idea for a character for, you know, a voice for another character that doesn't look like Doug or someone else. But you did a really good job with it. And you know what? You had the somberness in your voice and your delivery and your performance. I would pitch it up higher if it's possible. You're kind of like here. Oh, hey, you know, hey, everybody, this is Doug. You know, but his voice was higher because he was a young guy when I was doing him. He couldn't wait, you know, to go to the Honker Burger. And uh, I got a crush on Patty Mayonnaise, too. And throw more acting into it. Don't be afraid to do anything. Don't be afraid to uh, experiment. Be fearless. Eh, who's going to notice if we mess up anyway? In five minutes, everybody's going to be snoring. Hey, what the? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, brother, what a doofus. <laughs> you see, Doug? I told you, you can't dance. <laughs> What's going on here? Hey, give me up. You can't just leave me here. Come on. Nicely done. That was really good. He had the pitch. He had uh, Roger's pitch, which I could do a lot better if it was 30 years ago or so or whenever we did that but he had the pointedness of Roger. I looked at the picture of Roger and he reminded me of a bully that used to antagonize me in high school. He would always bother me. He had pointy hair, he had a pointy nose, and he, and he was always poking me in the shoulder and his shoes were pointy. Everything about him was pointed. And this uh, performer had the voice in the right pitch and everything. And I think that he was doing a good performance you know, you can stop every now and then and take your moment. You don't have to Gatlin gun through lines unless you're doing a tirade or something. But yeah, he's high energy, Roger, and I think you captured that. Good news, everyone. We were supposed to make a delivery to the planet Tweenus 12, but it's been completely destroyed. Well, back to the old drawing board, I suppose. We find our own jobs and businesses. For me, I'll just go to the home where an old bag of dust like me belongs. Good news, everyone. We've run out of food supply for the whole year. Oh, well, time to eat Zoidberg. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. He has the right confidence, and he's not afraid to perform. But the thing is, is you had the shake the shaky voice at first of a, like an old man, but, but he's really old. I mean, old as the hills. You know, I'm looking around for that, that young idiot fry. You know, don't be afraid to take your moment with words. I mean, that's how you draw people in. You don't rush through stuff. He, doing the professor, he began to sound like the guy that sits in front of a fire at his estate. And he's got a He's got a goblet of uh, Shiva's Regal, you know, leaning back on his laurels. And I've, I've done quite a thing. I've done many things. And ask me about one of them and I'll, well. Look at me. I'm Dr. Zeidberg, homeowner. I thought that you said that you had good news. <laughs> that was my ink defense, ladies.
That guy's really good. He's he's got the spark. He plays with the character voices and he takes his his moment. He did little pauses and it's like you gotta milk that stuff. That's what makes it sound like a real person rather than some, you know, cloying, annoying, made up cartoon voice. It makes it real. And he had the tonal quality that those characters have. He he was hitting the right notes and he was hitting all the right beats. I thought he was great. What I would say to him about Zoidberg, I don't do his voice like with my hand over my mouth, but you're supposed to sound like that. I don't know. Why am I doing here? Get me some cake. Zoidberg wants cake. Zoidberg could eat. If you try to imagine all that cool meat hanging off your face, how you would sound, just imagine it. And you'd be all over the place. You'd be all over the place. Oh, wait, you pesky wabbit. I've got you now. I know what you are thinking, Mr. Bunny Wabbit. You are thinking, did old Elmer fire six shots, or possibly only five? <laughs> That's really good. A for effort. Totally A for effort. He's fearless. You know what I mean? He had the tone in his voice, um, but maintaining it is the hard part. You know what? I think that was the Wabbit. He sounded like he was from Boston. I don't know if he was or not. But there's a lot of guys, you know, from Boston that were like, oh, Christ. I don't know. Uh, but but he's got the spirit. He's definitely got the spirit. And uh, good job. Uh, you were expecting maybe the Easter Bunny? Well, uh, does he say, what's up, Doc? Like this? Nah. What's up? I need a carrot. I'm going to grab a carrot because I need a carrot for this. Nah. What's up, Doc? I'm just gonna finish the carrot. Nope, never heard of him. You know, maybe there is no intelligent life out there in the universe after all. La -da -dee, la -da -dee -hum. That was really cool. I like the method of acting. Mel Blanc used to use substitutes for carrots when he did Bugs Bunny because he was allergic to carrots. He'd, he'd chew celery stalks and stuff like that. And he had the mouthful. It was real, like, True bugs, you know, that spirit, the smugness and the, uh, you know, I know something you don't know. It was in there. He just needs to keep consistent with the bugs character. You know, it's so easy to drop in and out of character when there's an extended dialogue. You know, if you watch the first episode of The Simpsons and you watch the, the 800th one or whatever it is, the characters sound totally different. Because we didn't know how to be consistent with characters we created. We weren't sure how far to go or to pull it back. And it's almost like, I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, they find themselves eventually. They become what they're supposed to be. When doing impressions, I think that was a good approximation, except to um, keep hearing yourself doing that character. Try not to be distracted. But I think you've got the, the right general idea. It's really hard to do that kind of stuff, doing impressions of somebody like Mel Blanc. I mean, forget it. He was the Mac Daddy. You know, he led the way for all of us. At last! I can have those pectoral implants. Today's character voice is going to be Ren from Ren and Stimpy. You stupid idiot! You worm! Turn around, you sick little monkey! Do you have to keep tapping like that, you bloated sack of protoplasm? I know what you want. You coveted my ice cream bar. No, you don't. You can't take it from me now. I've had this ice cream bar since I was a child. People always try to take it from me. Why won't they leave me? Hello? Boy, that was good. That was really great. Um, what I noticed was that's an episode from the first season of Ren and Stimpy. And this guy has the acting that he was studying from, from these characters. He has that acting down. The voices are, well, actually, he just, he did Ren. And it was really good. I mean, the intensity and that, you know, I'm going to kill you kind of thing was in there, you know, like gangsters. And, and then turning into a little whimpering child. But that is the John Chris Felusi version of Ren. It was the original version. You have to keep tapping like that! You bloated sack of protoplasm! He is replicating John Chris Felusi's choices and, and the voice, but he's doing a real good job. Our country reeks of trees. Our yaks 
are really large. Our country reeks of trees. Our yaks are really large and they smell like rotting beef carcasses. Bravo. You know what? That was the kilted yaksman anthem. They were singing and, and it was the, the Los Angeles gay men's chorus that we used. And they came in and sang the, the fake Canadian national anthem. I think that was really good and, and he did commit pretty well, but he, but he committed to the, the idea. I started this and I'm gonna finish it. That's A for effort. He had places where he was actually picking up the Larry Fine inspiration that kind of I got the character from. Two and a half, two and a half. Anybody make it three? I got two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. Going to two and a half, going to two and a half. Lady, will you make it three? You know, Larry, like I told you, he was like, hey, Mo, there's too much tinsel in the tree. He was trying to get that bad plumbing sound, you know, the guy that just did Stimpy. There's something about Philadelphia. Larry was from Philly. All of these characters that came from Philly sounded like they had bad plumbing or bad connection between their nose and mouth and throat. Like I did George Jetson earlier, you know, and it's like, oh, hello, all right. You know, and it sounds like something's pinched. And Larry Fine was nasally and he was from Philly. You know, it's like, oh boy, I can't wait to get back to Philly. Wow, so big up, and I mean it to everybody that got involved with this and wanted to take a crack at performing these characters. Stay inspired and keep motivated. Just don't be afraid to do. I heard a lot of people that, I mean, let put it this way. You're a hell of a lot further <laughs> than I was at this stage. I mean, I was 30 something when I started doing professional voices. So, you know, you're, you're way ahead of me. This is Billy West thanking you, Vanity Fair. I'm honored. I'm honored to be part of this. I'm glad that the characters are alive and well out there, no matter who does them. I'll catch you on the next shot.